So after you download the DVC schedule TXT file, so then you need to have a driver program to open the file. So like earlier we say, you need to include F string. So that's how we can create the IF string object to read from the file. For the DVC schedule, we only read the file. We don't output anything. So that's why here we will create the IF string object we call fin. So this fin you can either in the constructor passing the file name or you can open a little later. So we have the fin that open then DVC schedule txt file. So you can see here I only provide the double quote for the text file name. So that's why the requirement for this course Anytime when you need to read from a text file or write to the text file, please only including your file name. So that's the other hand mean this file will be exist in your working directory. What is the working directory? That's according to the IDE you use. Please make sure have your DVC schedule txt file Safe in your working directory. So couple slide I over I show you where to put the input file. No matter that's your input file or output file for this course, we are expecting they are in the working directory. So the working folder actually is coding to your IDE. If you're using the Cloud9, on Cloud9 actually they are just in the same location as your CPP file. Because Cloud9, basically, we didn't really create any project. For Visual Studio, uh, your working directory actually should be under your project folder. So that's under your project folder. And sometimes they may not be in the same folder as your CPP file. So you need to check where is the location. For the Cloud, uh, for the S code, uh, S code is a little complicated. They will be in somewhere under the debug folder. So the easier way you can just do right click from the project exe execution icon. So then here, for example, in your clown in your S code, uh, they will look like this. So your S code, you will have the execution icon. So then you see here, you need to go to show in finder. Uh, so then showing finder when they give you the file folder the location so this location is your working directory so sometimes they are not really specific uh, you can see where the location under the build so that's why here you see when you show in finder they give you the location so you can see here all my text file is under here so then i have my dvc schedule txt file so I'm using Mac system, so that's why here is the only um, IDE I can show you directly. So about if you're using the Visual Studio or CodeBlock, so then you need to make sure during the lab exercise, you talk with your classmate to find out your working directory. So then let's make sure you have your TST file under your working directory. So in order to make sure your open the file correctly. So that's why here we give you this one. Okay, so you can either type this one. You see, after you do the IF string object open, if they didn't open correctly, okay, actually they will sue the IO arrow. But this one in our sample code, we only say if the thing is not good, you sue the IO arrow, but they only through the arrow, through the exception, then your code end. Uh, so that's why you didn't really see any error output. So where I will recommend you, you can do if thing not good, then you just see out, okay? So you can just see out something, say see out the file cannot find on the screen. So that will be easy to understand if you can open the file correctly or not. Otherwise, if you just do the exception, your program just finish. Uh, so then you didn't know that's the arrow came from. So actually here, I also give you the complete code X demo in my handout. Okay, so I want you to replace, uh, earlier we only threw the IO exception. 
So you want to keep that to through the I/O exception. You also need to try and catch uh, to display the output. So here you either do uh, see out something after the file didn't open correctly, or you see you can just copy the code I have here. Okay, so then you need to catch your exception if that happened, then try to print out the arrow. Okay, so so far after you finish that, uh, actually what I want you to do in this video, make sure you can open the file correctly. Okay, so please make sure you finish this part. So then the rest of that, I will talk about how to do the parsing. So then you can post the video, make sure you can open correctly. So after you can open your input file correctly, now that star reads your input file. So then since your input file is good, not end of line, we have the while loop. Also, you can see here the while loop starts from here, then end after you read everything, all the line. So at the end, don't forget, you need to close your input file. So now after we open the file, that star reads line by line. Okay, so we'll read line by line. If you remember, we read line by line, we need to use get line, right? So the get line, you have two parameters. The first parameter is your input string. So then the second parameter is the string, want to save that line. So that's why before that, we define a string line variable. So this one is when we read from the input file, we do line by line. Okay, so after you do line by line, right? Okay, so now this module reading, we show you the way to parsing the token. So we try to start using this line, we will parsing the token. But this line actually is a C++ string. So the reading, when we show you how to parse the token, uh, what we do is we're using the string token okay so in this reading we're using the string token function to parse the whole string line by line a whole string token by token so when you're using the string token function actually string token function only parse the c string c string is the character array so when you have your string token, then you pass in your C string, that's your source string. So then you tell, give them the second parameter is your delimiter. So what is a delimiter? Delimiter means how should I read a substring until you hit the delimiter. So remember earlier that we show you, right? So our each line like this, you have turn you have section, you have the course net. They all separate by good T. So this T actually is we call the delimiter. When I have my source string, the whole thing. So then I will read until when I reach the delimiter, I stop here. Then they will return you the first token when you call the string token. So the first time you call string token, they reach the T, they finish. So then the next time, actually string token, this function will be called more than one time. The first time you call, they hit the delimiter, they stop. So then you have the first token. Then you call string token again, they will start from the first delimiter, then continue to read. When they hit the next delimiter, they stop. So then they give you a second token. Then I need to call the string token function again. They will start after the second delimiter. So then I read. So then when you hit the next delimiter, they give you another token. So continue. We just need to call string token one time, two time, three time, four time, five time. So then we will have the turn, section number, course, instructor, and the schedule information. So that's the string token function. 
So string token function actually give you the whole function information here. Uh, please make sure you understand that. So if here you also I give you the string token function. So how they work with the C string. Also be careful you work with C string, not C plus plus string example. So here I will also upload this sample code in our demo file under module 5. So then this one you can play with that how the string token function will do. So the string token function actually need to include C string. So then here you will have the token. So this one I just have a character array have the one sentence. So that's why you see every time your string token have the delimiter. So each time they call, they will print out the result. So then you see here you can try to run this one. Oh, but this one actually is we're using printf. So that's the C code. Oh, so then you can try to use the C out as well for the C++ code. So that's here uh, we show you why. So then one thing is after you do the get line. On get line, you need to save your one line into a C++ string. But when we show you the string token function, they are only process the C string. So that's how we do the string copy. We copy over the C++ string line into a buff, buff array. So this buff array is we define in here. So before we open the file, actually we declare some variable we need to do the parsing input file. So the first, the first one we have a character array buff. That's 1000 size. So then we have our tab. Uh, we're using the constant character pointer tab. But this one just for the tab. That's our delimiter. So then we have the token. Uh, so every time you call the string token, they give you a pointer. So that's our token. So these three variables being defined earlier. So that's why here, when you're using a buff array, also we see if this buff array is an empty line, we just continue. So then that's parsing line by line. So you see we have the five token we want to read, right? Turn, section, course, instructor, where, and when. So this one we make then is constant string. So what you will do is the constant string, your constructor, you will just call the string token. So you see the first string token, first parameter, you always pass the string you want to process. So that's your delimiter. So that's the first time you call that. So this one, when they return you the token here, that will be the turn. Then the second time when you call the string token, you are not giving them the whole string again because you already call here. They remember what it was the last time they call when they hit the first parameter, first delimiter. So then when you have the second time when you call the string token, you start from zero. So then again, our delimiter is our tab. So this one with this conditional operator or not doesn't matter. You can remove that. You just um, don't have the conditional operator. But here, the most important thing is you need to call the string token one, two, three, four, five, five times. So that's why they can have all the token value. So then after we're done, we have turn, section, course, instructor, and where and when. Uh, so then this one, after we process these five token, we need to have the course name, like consign to 10. I need to get the consign subject code. So that's why here we're using the subject code. We start using the find. Uh, because remember, if that consign to 10, we have the dash. Uh, so then we just need to have our dash, um, consign to dash to 10. Before the dash is our subject code. So then we're just using the course name, try to find where is the dash. If we don't have that dash, okay, continue. This one is not the correct subject code. So then otherwise we have the subject code start from the course from beginning. I read until the dash. Also uh, that's how we will have the subject code. So afterward, after you're parsing the token correctly, at the end, that's print one by one to make sure 
each line you parse correctly.